So I, I'd like to say a few words on the subject of attachment and non-attachment, detachment. These, uh, these words are uh, rather difficult to understand experientially and um, when they're taken out of context in the, um, Buddhist, the Buddhist teachings then they can easily be misunderstood In fact, when we uh, use the word uh, non-attachment, um, then it, it's important to, to understand that um, it's non-attachment to uh, things, everything, as being me or mine. So that's, that's the important um, clause, the important um, conditioning clause here, as me or mine. Um, so, um, many of the teachings of the Buddha deal with how to live in the world. They uh, are not exclusively concerned with um, leaving the world, becoming a monk or nun, and the, if that was so, Buddhism um, probably wouldn't have survived as long as it has done. What the Buddha wants us to do is to understand the way that we create suffering for ourselves in our lives and to apply the skillful means that he gave us um, to reduce and eventually eliminate um, that um, behavior. So uh, the Buddha's analysis of our life is that we attach to our body, our feelings, our perceptions, our thoughts, our emotions, our sense consciousness as being me, mine. We assume um, this independent, um, permanent entity or soul standing behind our life, um, being the actor, the one who's acted upon, the one who, who feels, the one who thinks, and so on. Um, and the Buddha said that that um, sense of this um, being, this ego is um, an assumption not based upon the facts of our experience. So he encourages us to look more closely at the nature of body, feelings, thoughts, perceptions, emotions, sense consciousness, um, to, um, to really see what's going on. So it's not a matter of adopting a belief that, uh, or a Buddhist view, that we should be non-attached to this and non-attached to that, because that whole way of teaching that we should be this way and we shouldn't be that way um, is not one um, that the Buddha felt was very wise. Um, what does happen is that um, as you see things more clearly, then your relationship to them changes um, and instead of um, your mind um, being completely um, the prey of the changes and fluctuations internally and externally in your life um, develop um, a buoyancy and a stability um, which is not um, assumed as an attitude, um, but is just a natural expression of the clear vision um, of the way things are. So with the physical body, for instance, when we start examining the nature of the physical body, 
um, and seeing how it changes um, all the time. So obviously it's getting older every day, um, but it changes according to uh, what we eat, the amount of exercise that we have, our mental states, and so on and so forth. And we need to see it's, it's not such a solid thing at all, it's a fluctuating thing. Um, and that's the insights that come from looking at the nature of the body um, start to um, permeate the way that we uh, relate to our body. And uh, for someone who, who doesn't um, reflect on the nature of their body and mind, then when they get physically ill, then usually they get um, depressed, anxious, upset, fearful, and so on. And a lot of those emotional reactions um, are based upon this unthinking assumption that we are the body or the body um, belongs to me. When you see the body more clearly, then those emotional reactions, um, even if they do arise, are much weaker and are seen through more easily. So, um, we live in, in the world, if we don't follow the monastic path, and very few do, um, then uh, what we are seeking to do is to develop wise relationships with our own body and mind, with the people, our family members, with people at work, with people in the society uh, that we live in. The idea is the clearer you see, the more you understand of the way things are, then the wiser your relationship uh, becomes. Your ability to see things more clearly um, is um, based upon willingness to spend time um, developing mindfulness lengthening the attention span, becoming more sensitive to what's going on in the present moment, um, letting go of uh, fascination with the past and the future when um, memory and imagination are not necessary um, for one, fulfilling one's responsibilities in the present moment. And the uh, the ideal is um, of uh, something that we in the Buddha called uh, Samadana, so just a short Pali lesson. Uh, the word for attachment in Pali is Upadana, and a word that comes from the same root as um, linguistic root as uh, Upadana is the word Samadana, which um, is um, included in the taking precept. Um, ceremony and what it means is taking something up um, with understanding of why you're doing that and, and how best to accomplish it um, so an example that a child give is you're going into a dark place you you pick up a torch and as long as you're in the dark um, space then you hold on to the torch you come out of the darkness you put the torch down again so, uh, are you attached to the torch? No, you're holding on to the torch in an appropriate way uh, for a particular purpose. Um, and that's just the, the way that we relate um, to the world of uh, the material world and the social world, um, is that we relate to it in the best way possible, um, understanding exactly what our purpose is, um, what are the um, the dangers and the advantages um, of, of, of doing so, and the uh, the goal is uh, happiness um, and welfare of ourselves and others. So um, Buddha is not advocating that um, Buddhists should all uh, leave their families and go off and live in caves by any means at all, but he wants us to to be wise and understand um, ourselves and the world we live in. And a further point to make is that um, the more wise we are, the more compassionate we are. It's not uh, indifferent to um, human suffering, far from it, exactly the opposite, the more awake we are to it. And the, um, if 
meditation is not grounded in the, the Eightfold Path, the full training of the Buddha, then um, it can lead to um, obsession um, with uh, yourself and your, your mind. And, and, and that's why it has to be balanced um, through giving, sharing, helping others, keeping precepts, uh, and so on. And the meditation practice is not a panacea, it's not an answer to all problems in itself, um, but it is an extremely powerful tool um, which um, must be employed um, in, uh, in harness with all the other elements of the path. So these are a, um, a few reflections on the subject of attachment and on attachment. And, uh, I will leave this here and uh, offer it as a small gift to uh, all the uh, practicing Buddhists in Central Africa.